Thank you for watching. Today we're doing an unboxing of this uh, Lulzy Super Rock Ray. You might wonder where the box actually is, but I put it over there because it's so big I can sit inside it myself almost. It's uh, really ridiculous. So if I would put it on the table, you really wouldn't see anything but the box. I will make sure that you see some uh, shots of the box because it does state some uh, information. Um, this thing, when I got it out of the box, I was like, I was really blown away because not only is it huge, but it's so aggressively uh, shaped and so aggressively designed. I'm absolutely uh, in love with the way it looks. But as always, we're going to look at all of the more boring stuff uh, first. Now, this thing came out a couple of uh, uh, months ago. Or they actually announced it a couple of months ago. Uh, I'm a huge fan of uh, slightly larger scale RCs that are electric. Like for example, in the past, uh, the Yeti XL. I love that thing that that one did have some of its uh, uh, features weren't completely up to spec. So for example, the, the gears in the rear axle, they strip, the front uh, strip, but all of that is also due to, uh, to size. So you have to keep in mind, once you start blowing up uh, these, these vehicles and going to a larger scale, the weight also uh, drastically increases and with that also uh, breakages, they become more expensive too. That's just uh, something that is uh, uh, inherent with it. Now, um, the, the Yeti XL got discontinued. I was pretty bummed out uh, about that. Lulzy in the meantime, they released uh, the Super Baja Ray. Really nice looking truck. I have not seen one in person, but all the footage that I've seen and, uh, and all that. It looked like something that's had uh, uh, the type of footprint that, that I like. And I really hoped that I would come out with something like this, with like a rock racer type of uh, vehicle. And it finally did, so that's uh, super cool. So far me uh, drooling over uh, this thing actually getting released. You get some uh, basic tools, so you get this, you also get this one. I'm still really bad at muting my shit. You are welcome. This is to uh, to adjust the, the upper, um, what do you call it? Turn buckle for the, for the upper arm of your uh, suspension. In the front, this is independent front suspension and a solid axle in the rear. So uh, over here you can see that uh, the front is as per uh, Yeti and as per uh, a Baja Ray and as per Rock Ray. Front is independent and then in the rear you see that there's a massive solid axle. We will get into all of the details a bit later because there's so much to go over with this truck. There's, they have so many uh, little details in there that to make it look uh, as good as it actually does. Uh, so here you see a massive rear axle. So this uh, little tool over here is to adjust the upper turn buckle of your uh, front top suspension arm. The bottom is uh, almost solid looking, but uh, again, I will show that to you a bit later. I will get uh, a hernia most likely during this video somewhere. Um, cross wrench, always uh, handy of course. 17 millimeter uh, wheel uh, nuts, wheel hex, uh, undo them, a thing of a bobber. And then, uh, well, some, uh, some other sizes, a seven, a 10, and an eight. Pretty sure you need all of those if you're going to do some uh, maintenance to this truck. Uh, you get a manual, checked it out a tiny bit. At first glance, it looks like you can't really get into the truck all that easy, but it is actually fairly uh, uh, maintenance friendly. So the minute you do need to uh, dive into it, it's not that big of a deal to actually uh, dig inside and do what you need to do. The whole motor unit, for example, with the motor plate and the pinion, that all drops out from what I've understood through uh, the bottom. Uh, I will, during this video, also remove some of the body panels so you can have a tiny bit of a look at uh, what's going on underneath it. Very clear manual, also it gives you some, uh, uh, some exploded views so you kind of know what's going on on the inside. For example, on the inside of the rear axle, I did not know this before I stumbled across uh, this part over here. Hold on, let me see if I can actually find it. Um, these two plastic items, I was like, what are these for? Turns out that these are actually some uh, inserts inside the rear axle. This is a three degree uh, toe in block or toe out in case you want to do something that nobody else does. But there's uh, currently they're at zero and this is three degrees. So if you want to give it a tiny bit more toe in, you can actually put these in there. Now, how does that work? Um, I wonder because usually it's like a straight stub axle into it and that's that. But this actually works with a drive cup coming out of the differential on the inside of the rear axle, then a regular conventional dog bone construction basically leading to another drive cup on the outside and that 
also allows you then to give it some uh, some toe in. Pretty smart. Um, you will see that on the bottom, if I dip it like this, there's a massive uh, drive shaft going on, telescopic, with uh, metal yokes that goes to that uh, rear drive shaft. There's no planetary reduction in here, uh, nothing that you would find, for example, on a UDR. Uh, and I'm pretty glad about that because that's also something that, uh, of course, could go wrong. Torque twist wise, this thing has so much weight of its own that I think it will basically be non existent. So that uh, I think kind of concludes uh, all of the super boring stuff. Uh, do make sure you read that manual. This is not like a, a toy car, toy car. This can actually really hurt yourself or uh, other people around you in case you're not really knowing what you're doing. I think once you put some batteries in here, you're talking, you're talking almost 20 pounds of a vehicle. So uh, that's potentially pretty dangerous. Comes with this uh, Spectrum DX2E radio system. You can, and I have no idea how that works, but you can actually um, uh, add, I think like a speedometer on top of it, or you can like put your phone in it. So there is a, there are a few options to actually uh, go and enhance this and make it more fancy. Um, all in all, this is not like a, this is not a bad radio at all. Uh, I do think that, uh, the lights that you will find, I will get to that, but the lights that you will find uh, on the truck, they will be on the entire time, I'm assuming, since it is only a two-channel radio. And then over here, there's actually a dial to dial down the AVC. AVC is a, a, kind of like a gyro system. So that is LOSI's Active Vehicle Control System, or Spectrum's, I must say, Active Vehicle Control System. So that means that in case you're uh, a bit of a new driver and uh, the back gets away from you, you're like oversteering like crazy, the AVC kind of corrects that and makes sure that you can get around the track in a, kind of like a professional looking fashion. And then if you want to sort of like dial that down, so the, the more advanced you become as a driver, you can just dial that back and uh, not use it at all if you choose to do that. Um, well, let's put this to the side as well. Let's have a look at the truck itself. It looks like, uh, well, a side by side, like a rock bouncer. I'm not sure, it has like a tiny bit of a, a Arctic Cat type of flavor going on in the front. Also a bit can Maverick, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure that once you look at it and you're familiar with those vehicles that you will uh, kind of see that resemblance and see what I mean. Huge tires. I love this aggressively shaped uh, front fender section with those uh, shocks poking through. There's a lot of attention to detail. So not just do you have um, uh, that whole body shape that, that is like really cool, but also all these tiny details, like for example, uh, mirrors that, uh, that actually have some, some mirror stickers on them. Uh, you got these faux resis in the front. Uh, they're even, they're, they're labeled. These are uh, uh, licensed by Fox. Now that's pretty cool. This is not a functioning resi. So this tube here, this is basically just a fuel tube just to make it look like it's uh, um, a reservoir shock. Uh, same with the back over here as well. You see them on top of the cage. Super cool. Uh, fire extinguishers. I'm not sure if, yeah, there's one on this side as well. Otherwise I needed to turn the entire truck around. Some window netting. This is actually rubber. At first glance, you might think that this is hard plastic, but this is rubber. Pretty detailed interior panel. Not that big of a fan of the, the shiny suits. I've referred to that in the past with all my axial trucks as uh, people in gimp suits. That's the same over here, but that's a really easy fix. You just take that interior panel out give it a coat of flat clear, put it back in there and it will look dulled down, it will look a whole lot better than, uh, than it does when it is shiny. Uh, but all the molding, there's even, there's like pace notes, there's like a GPS, uh, it just looks super cool. Uh, one of the other things that I immediately noticed was on the back, you got some limiting straps. Now for me, that's new to see that uh, stock in an RC. Not sure if uh, Losi has also done that in the in the smaller Baja uh, Ray and Rock Ray versions, but uh, I'm not familiar with them, and uh, I have not seen this before. So I think that that's pretty cool as well. Uh, those limiting straps they limit the amount of uh, well, it also kind of says it in the name. It limits the amount of droop. So in case you have full decompression after those uh, shocks, uh, these limiting straps they kind of help uh, not having the full weight of that rear axle and the full weight of the decompression and the violence of the decompression have those on the rod ends of your shocks. I'm not sure how I feel about the, uh, the weight oil that is used. 
Uh, it's pretty hard to determine currently without uh, any batteries in there and also without any uh, like reasonable temperature to, to run the truck outside. Uh, so I guess that's something that I will find out in the long run. But these are uh, aluminum body shocks, so in case I want to change it out, it is pretty easy and uh, they look really stout and beefy. All the parts are big on these uh, shocks, so in case I want to drain them from uh, their oil, have a look at them, then um, yeah, it's almost like working on a regular uh, full-size vehicle. That's, uh, that's how big all this stuff is. Steering uh, rods in the front, these are basically a set uh, length really thick aluminum i'm thinking that this is like almost uh, it's close to half an inch so it's close to like a, a 10 or 12 millimeters in the diameter looks really good uh also here in the front telescopic drive shafts with uh, metal yokes uh, so like a cv deconstruction looks huge so i'm not seeing anything going wrong there anytime soon either then one of the curious things i think in the front i will make sure that you see a close-up of that is that it almost looks like there's an insert on the bottom a arm so that lower a arm on the if you see it on the bottom it's all covered up and then on the top it's like there's like a, a plate over it mounted over it just to ensure that no debris gets in there so that's uh, something that i haven't seen before and uh, we'll have a look at that uh, later on the top uh, hinge pin as well is like a u shape i'm not familiar with that i haven't seen that before either so it goes through the front uh, diff case uh, kind of over the bulkhead and then uh, connects one end of the of the front to the other but uh, to have that as a, as a u-shaped uh, hinge pin in itself i have not seen that before front bulkhead there's like a bulkhead plate a top plate under the the plastic bulkhead uh, that is stamped aluminum by the looks of it i'm not sure if it is a three or four millimeters i'm guessing it is four and then there's a few aluminum posts going down uh, everything there holding uh, together the steering assembly and the steering rack. I will make sure that I take the body off so you can you can see on the inside. You can have a look at uh, some of the of the engineering details that uh, are going on. I believe that the motor inside this is a 750 kV uh, dynamite motor, uh, 8S capable. The ESC as well. You can see that one on the top over here. If you have a look inside the interior panel, that's 8S capable. Uh, totally insane it claims on the box that it's uh, capable of doing uh, top speeds of 55 miles an hour uh, in kilometers that is 88 kilometers an hour which is bonkers so uh, most likely I will only be running it on 6s at least at first until I get like a, a bit of a feel for the car uh, more details here in the back I'm assuming that this is also where the receiver box is uh, housed because there's a little antenna going on over there. Fully functioning spare. Once you would take that away, you will see that there is also a scale looking radiator with some, uh, some fans. Really cool. I can't say enough about the way that they managed to finish this truck up. Uh, there's a working LED bar in uh, the back over here. There's a working LED bar in the front over here and then to top it off to go completely crazy there's also a working LED bar all the way in the front. I'm not sure how this is going to hold up in a crash but the fact that it's included in my book is uh, pretty freaking crazy. Um, the body panels. This is one big body panel that uh, kind of wraps around and then the roof is a separate body panel so it's only two panels. Uh, at first I thought that they might have separated these and uh, turned this into like separate door section and a separate hood section, kind of like you would find it with uh, the Yeti XL, but it turns out that that is not the case. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing clear bodies for these available so I can uh, do up my own paint scheme. I do think that this paint scheme that comes stock on it, they have a white one and a silver one, this is the silver one, uh, it looks phenomenal. Very aggressive, I can't... can't say enough about that all the plastic components they feel very uh very well made like for example these trailing arms in the back they're very stout especially once i uh, compare them for with for example the yeti xl because i do think that that was kind of the the benchmark uh in this uh, scale uh, the yeti xl they claim to be uh eight scale that was not eight scale that was six scale uh this is also claimed to be six scale that's actually correct because uh that is what it is massive truck a lot of real estate uh big footprint i really uh, i really enjoy trucks this size top links you will see uh, in the back are also aluminum the same uh, diameter as these uh, steering links 
Um, yeah, overall, all these components together, uh, throw them together like this and design a truck that looks this good. I cannot wait to, uh, to take this out. Trucks this heavy, stuff goes wrong, uh, it goes wrong horrifically. Uh, this is not a forgiving truck, this is not a truck for somebody who's new to the hobby. So uh, in that as well, you need to uh, like keep in mind that this is like different type of budget going on. Breakages will be more expensive. Uh, but I am sure that uh, if uh, a truck like this really takes off, you see them appear more and more often that uh, the aftermarket will also jump in there and uh, come up with some solutions in uh, some of the more problematic areas. That has historically always been the case. Um, if you have any questions about this uh, Lossy Super Rock Ray, let me know in uh, the comments box. I try to uh, answer to all of the comments. Uh, and if you want to be ahead of what I'm doing over here, links to my Instagram and uh, Facebook are also in the video description box. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye bye. Back on.